All right, so we're going to take a moment to ground. So everybody, wherever you are, if you can, find a place where your either your feet and or your seat are touching the ground. If it's safe where you are and you feel comfortable, you're welcome to let the eyes lower towards the ground, towards the earth, or even close the eyes. The eyes can also be focusing on whatever you're doing in this moment or in a way that feels most comfortable. Do what you can to bring the entire body into a place of comfort and ease. So you might find you want to adjust a little more here and there. Let the mind sense the contrast of whatever happened before now, the getting here, setting up, and the being here, arriving right here in this moment. Let this register in the body and the nervous system as you make a connection with the breath, following the inhale and the exhale. Let some part of yourself recognize you have the capacity to shift energy, to be conscious of a shift of energy. and to experience the effort of bringing yourself into the right here, right now. Observe the breath, follow each inhale, follow each exhale. Simply notice it, there's nothing you need to change. And if it feels available to you to take longer inhales and longer exhales, go for it. You may find that this continues to help deregulate any stress, tension, anxiety. Imagine your shoulders settling into that just right place. Feel the connection of seat and or feet to floor. From this grounded place, feel that uplifted energy reaching out through the top of the head towards the sky, towards the cosmos. This is your fully expansive self arriving here, landing in present time. Your eyes have been closed. You might slowly open them to look low. You're welcome to bring your hands together in prayer position if that's comfortable. Thumbs against the sternum, fingers touching. I'll chant one ohm, that sacred sound vibration, this primordial sound is the beginning point for now, then, and all time. You're welcome to join if you'd like. Inhale. Om. Om Shanti, 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 Om Peace, Peace, Peace. All right, if your eyes have been closed again, you can start to open them. Look around this space, acknowledge the space you've arrived in, each other that's in this space. And all right. So we are here for our part two of our Empower Hour from Sunday, um, largely because Lars was like, we got to continue this conversation. <laughs> this is a good topic. And um, so we met on Sunday. We had some technical difficulties. And um, so we're hoping that this will feel like a little bit more of a complete 
um, conversation. This is the one that focuses on things that are emphasized in September as national month holidays. We're looking at national self-care awareness month at that land. National Self-Improvement Month, and National Cleanup Month. So let your mind consider, hmm, what do those have in common? Or what can one reference the other? Why is cleanup in there? And I'll give a brief overview of where we went on Sunday, and I'll ask Natasha and Lars to also chime in with any components from that if um, you wish, mostly just to recap briefly and then to let this time together dive back in and to welcome Marquez and maybe anyone who might be joining on Instagram Live. Essentially, we were looking at approaches to self-care, appreciating that those are vital, that we do need to work on our self-care and to have, a, I always think of it as a bell that rings and a holiday um, reminder that this is something to do, to take action, right? Something to think about. Does it ever reach a point where we might consider that this self-care Practice worked at one point in my life, but it no longer works for different reasons. Either we've matured or we recognize there's actually, there was harm in what I was doing before. And now I have a different approach, either harm to myself or harm to others. When I wasn't being as mindful with my self-care, it was maybe more towards indulgence versus mindfulness. When I think of self-improvement, in what direction am I improving? Is it more in the material world with titles and degrees and positions and titles of in a career path, family? You know, what is what are we improving? Or is it something more of an internal focus that ends up working out on the external? And then finally, we brought in the National Cleanup Month, appreciating again the importance of what that month signals, which is clean up for parks, beaches, sidewalks, neighborhoods, all of that. But what if we use that as a metaphor for ourself? What if our sidewalk was ourself or the beach was ourself, where we may consciously or unconsciously litter that space with something that's not really intended to be there. It's actually causing a disruption in our natural state, just like a plastic bottle on the beach. It's not part of the beach, <laughs> but somehow it landed there and there's lots of them now to the point that we don't even know how to get rid of them all. So where does that happen in our own head, um, in our own heart? All right, so I will um, move a few things here <laughs> so I can see better. And um, let Lars and Vitasha, if there's anything they want to, anything they want to contribute to that, um, and we'll go from there. Thanks, Mark. I really needed that dropping in, um, and because I, I felt kind of stirred up coming in here. Uh, sometimes parts of me get overwhelmed and um, at the moment there's some wildfire smoke in the air that, that you could tell the air is a little bit you know less less clear than usual um, and and Folsom Street Fair is happening this weekend so parking was really tight so I really benefit from that grounding mm -hmm. um, I recall uh, on Sunday um, uh, the, the what I associate with with the convergence of these three times is Ken Wilber's integral theory about uh, showing up, growing up, waking up, and um, cleaning up. Cleaning up. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Which uh, I've just got a lot to say and a lot comes up. And um, it, it was, it was a bit chaotic on Sunday. So um, I, I, 
I remember the edges of some of some of what we shared, but what else do you remember, Natasha? Well, um bring this here because can you hear me fine if I'm back here? We oh, can. yeah. Yeah. I try to project, but screaming is a problem. Okay. So um for me, um reviewing last Sunday. I do feel like the discussion could have been expanded more, um, but it's just, it's a very complicated topic in itself because it can be included in so many different sort of um, areas of your life and areas inside of yourself and outside of yourself and interactions with other people. It's difficult to um, just bring one conversation within one hour. So I'm very thankful and happy that we can proceed forward with this conversation. Um, but I, to, to start of today, I think um, whenever we're talking about all of these topics, I think the thing that rings the truth is having the awareness. And I think once you have the awareness, then you can start to say this or to say that, but just bringing the light to the topic is to me, the first step in all of these things. Absolutely. Well, how would we like to dive back in? Do we want to start with your um, observation from the, to say, Ken Wilbur? Um, I could start with my observation. Thanks. Mm -hmm. uh, thanks, Mark. I could, I, I, I wouldn't mind starting with an observation uh, I also think I brought up, but I can't recall from a sensory awareness experiment. Um, I'm, I'm part of the Sensory Awareness Foundation, which honors the work of Charlotte Selver, who, um, who was this amazing somatic pioneer elder. And there was uh, introduced in one of the classes, a um, experiment, because these are experiments in awareness, experiments in mindfulness, where we, uh, find a piece of trash and put it in the trash can and and personalize it. So as I'm throwing something away, I, I say, I'm, I'm throwing you away. <laughs> you know, bring bring a little bit of, a little bit more, just a degree more of personal, personalization and awareness. Uh, and ever since I did that experiment, I've been doing that when I throw things away because, you know, we all throw so much plastic yeah. away. And, and and I think most of us are a little confused about like recycling. Like, can I recycle this lid of a disposable, um, you know, thing of hummus, or can I recycle last night's takeout container? Uh, does that go in the garbage? Just to bring up, just a just like you said, Vitasha, like a, just a little more awareness and presence and intentionality into simple things like throwing away and i'm not going to say that this is going to this is the answer to cleaning up the world i i think that there's a a small piece that we each do and then a, a really big piece like elected conscious leaders and this was also national voter registration day this last uh, wednesday and uh i think i think it, they're they're equally uh vital that doing our part and recognizing when we're throwing stuff away because we're going to keep throwing it away and uh, making sure that that young people and all people are empowered to elect conscious leaders who believe in democracy who fight for human rights and the rights of the planet and the rights of nature um, instead of like allow um I'm not going to go too deep, but <laughs> allow artificial intelligent uh, bots to create um, such a flood of misinformation in 2024 and beyond that people uh, feel disempowered to vote. So how can we, how can I, by cleaning up and uh, uh, improving myself and helping improve my community, not cross my own boundaries, doing too much, feeling like I'm rescuing and fixing, becoming burned out like I have in the past and crashing. What's the balance? So that's 
you know that that's why i felt passionate to like spend a whole hour because we got cut short on sunday but i think it's really like this stuff is is now is here and now very important conversation to keep on pushing um and i've got so many different channels on in mm -hmm. my mind you know i'm really i'm really interested to to you know keep being grounded in the present like how can i keep presencing what's what's true here and you know, one way is by practicing listening to you so what do you guys have marquez you're new to this conversation but i want you to jump in whenever you feel comfortable but i don't want you to put you on the spot either so do you feel like you want to share anything at the moment yes oh yeah great so i do have one thing that's top of mind do i need to like turn this way to you and like where is this no, okay be, great. Be comfortable yeah okay. <laughs> it's comfortable while holding a mic i should okay. say <laughs> so the one thing that comes to mind for me is just talking about like having the awareness of having these conversations i try to think of for myself when i am in conversations like this like how would i integrate just a thing into my life from what I'm hearing. And one thing I recognize I do a lot that I'm conscious of in terms of like cleanup is in my relationships. I was talking to my mom earlier today about how easy it is when I hear the typical conversation, how's work? How's this? How's that? And then what naturally will happen for me is I'll think about, well, whatever bad happened. Mm. And then that's what I'm putting in the space. And it's very rare unless, like if Lars literally says, what are you grateful for or something like that? It's very rare that I'll just go, oh, I'm so grateful these things happen. That isn't what happens. Mm -hmm. It's, oh, how did my week go? Let me tell you what so-and-so did. <laughs> and then, you know, and before I know it, I'm thinking, why did I share that? Mm -hmm. And it's just that it's easy to remember that. And so I think it's interesting in terms of like cleanup for me, I've been trying to be more mindful in my conversations with people to say, what would you like to share or how can I support you? Or what are you feeling grateful for? Like, what can we talk about that's actually not work or not the thing that we all know we don't like? Some people like their jobs, but for some of us, like for myself, I think sometimes when I would talk to certain people, I'd get on autopilot and go, how's work? How's this? How's that? And in reality, we've talked about it for years. They hate their job. That's how work is, right? But it's easy to just get into the automatic, hello, how's work, and do the program. Mm -hmm. And so I think my point in saying all that is just in terms of that's what came to me like around cleanup is thinking about how do I clean up my own thought process about what I'm focusing on? And then also in my relationships, what am I leaning into that space? What am I sharing what program am I on as we're plugging into each other and talking about the same thing that we actually don't like and vibrating that higher and higher and higher every time we talk and then calling that a connection. I'm saying I would really like to start more and more intentionally creating a different connection with my friends and future people where the conversation is broader than just the typical, how's work? What do you do next? How's work? What do you do? And just doing this repeat, program that's not really serving any of us i'm sorry say math or meth oh whoa neither no oh wait oh. It, yeah wait. What? oh I, I think just in the end i was just saying um doing things on autopilot and just doing how's work how's this how's work and do it and just kind of doing this repeat but just being more conscious about what i'm bringing into the space and what i'm asking to be brought back to me in my relationships moving forward. Oh, okay. Okay. I just wanted to make sure I heard that properly. Um, for me personally, I feel like um, the world is the world and the world is always going to be the world. And um, for the 98% of it, I can't do anything about it. But for the 2% that I exist in, that's the thing that I can control and manipulate. So within my own world, meaning the me, um, I, I love this time of the year for self-evaluation, like you just said, to just be a little reflective and say, hey, do I even like me as a person? Is the person that I am a person that I would want to walk up to 
and a randomness and trying to make a friend with myself. Like, am I that person that I enjoy being around? And I think whenever I start everything with myself, my environment changes drastically. I meet different people. I talk in different ways because I become different to myself. And I notice and change the things that I do and do not like about myself in a way of sort of like um, self-growth. And it's, it's very harsh like to say, hey, these things are all very great about you. But, you know, there's also these things that are bad. Do you want to keep these bad? Are you okay with these bad? Or would you maybe want to manipulate that and change it, that into something that can be more positive for this world? And I think for um, me very specifically is um, I did have that point of my life where it was just like, like he said, it, it became very monotonous. It's like all of the time, the same conversations. And it's like, why am I having these same conversations all the time? So I took a step back and I just stopped talking as much and started listening more. And it realized that it's not the conversations, it's the people. So then why am I interacting around people that I don't even like? It's because I'm the person that I don't even like. So maybe if I change myself, and I do not advocate people changing themselves. Let me be very clear about this. I apologize. I mean, like, um, say every day I wake up and I'm very sour. And I'm like, you smell. Like, why? why do I, I think that person knows they smell. It's not necessary for me to tell them that they stink. So why do I have to make the comment on it? Instead, hey hello, how are you? You know, it's just a different sort of a conversation. And once I realized that it's effectual for me to just have a different approach to life, then not only did my own worldview change, but the world that kind of wanted to rotate around me changed in and of itself. You made me think right away of that. Um, Gandhi's short paraphrased sentence you know be the change you want to see and I want to just yeah pause a moment to appreciate um Marquez wanting to think about how do I take this into action and Batasha recognizing the the contrast between what is it that I can do that makes the change versus how much am I actually changing that 98 percent of the world around me or whatever that percentage is sometimes I think we think we can do more than we maybe can do in a moment. And that causes so much stress and shutdown. So when we can, the balance of what we're talking about today, do the work that's our own work or our own self-care, but to the point that it's, what I like to say is that it's for the, for the effort of being of service, not for the effort of indulging. And when we can notice, like, am I doing this just so I can like, indulge in laziness or indulge in having things or am I doing this so I have what I need so I can then be of service in some capacity in the world and even if my service in the world is in this circle right here like I'm good I won you know <laughs> um or if my effort is that as soon as I feel more fortified and grounded I can start making a bigger impact because I'm fortified for that but if I'm not fortified for that, then I'm going to eventually burn out or shut down. So what, where is that balance where I can, you know, do the, do whatever work it is or do whatever self care. I like maybe using that word self care instead of work, because we often talk about do the work. I got work. I got to do work on myself. You know, what if it's, I've got to care for myself enough so that I have resource for whatever else I believe in or whatever else I wish for. And that is like we talked earlier, that is going to change throughout our life. I think what I, my mission was in my twenties is not my mission. Now my mission in my thirties and what I thought I was working towards way different. What I was working on three years ago was different. So I really appreciate each of us showing up and just saying, here's where we are today. What is my impact? What is the uh, uh, impact this can have on me? And then I can take that forward. I also want to just touch on and as a talking point, um, there are times when we don't feel good. There are times when we are having a bad day and when we don't like our work and we do need to talk about it in some capacity, but how can we ask our friends or how can we 
and invite the conversation so it isn't just the program but it actually is like tell me more about that or well what if it would have gone like this how would you have felt now what if we found some other way to engage it's not just like yeah i had that too and it just increases the negativity what if we had a way to sort of you know unpack whatever that is and then we came up i see vatasha raising her hand excitedly <laughs> go so for it I do, and um i can't give credit to whoever it was but it was brilliant <laughs> um you have to know people and you have to trust people and you have to be safe with that person and if you don't have those things how can you have this space to have these sort of conversations. If any one of those levels are blocked, then I don't feel as though you're the sort of person I can open myself up to. So then I'm not gonna speak on it. You're not gonna speak on it. We're gonna just stay as topical as possible so that I'm protecting myself and you're protecting yourself. And I think that is fully necessary for a lot of interactions that we have. I have, um, I don't recommend going and um, saying to just any Joe Schmo, I have all of this trauma. Would you like to hear about it? Um, maybe that's not the best thing to do. Maybe the best thing to do is to seek the person, like a psychologist, that can give you those things that you know that they have the knowledge to help you. You can build an environment of trust. And then you feel safe enough to share what you have to share. And then you also get the proper help back in return. You know what I mean? So it, for me, it's that um, whenever I have these sort of conversations with people, then it's already established that I'm not here to judge you. There's nothing that I'm going to do to harm you from this conversation. And whether we know each other um, explicitly or even briefly, we know enough about one another to say that we won't be harmed in the exchange of words. Beautiful. Any other response from all of that? Um, yeah, I'm, I'm fully with you, Vitasha. <clears throat> and at the same time, if I don't take a risk to be authentic and be myself and be vulnerable, when I, even with, in a work setting where I don't necessarily think I'm safe. And people learn from that and that ripples, just like um, if I am if I have a habit, which I have had in the past of complaining about how shitty things are, that has rippled and it really comes back in dividends. And so does gratitude practice. I started doing um, daily gratitude practice and then just like sending it to random friends like Marquez and like, and also, um, practicing being gratitude to being grateful to individuals, um, which I'm, I'm digressing a little bit, but um, when I when I can tell you how grateful I am to be in your space and doing this talk and like mm -hmm. how generous and kind I think you are, you know, I, I know that that's a benefit. <laughs> uh, I have to get a little vulnerable to do that. And all I'm saying is that. Um, that it's it's good to seek safety. I think that um, gravitating towards psychotherapists to create that kind of a feel for vulnerability uh, is something we we learn to do in a kind of materialist, uh, reductionist kind of paradigm. And and I think the the, the paradigm change is that instead of us. Uh, kind of all being programmed to follow the materialism in whatever way by 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 maybe uh, identifying with DSM categories or thinking that this belongs there. I think the switch is to get the materialism and and all that science, which is so brilliant and makes so much sense, to work for us, um, and and have some sort of balance. Uh, so I don't, I'd say all that not to disagree with you. I think it's great to create safe spaces and create safe people. And, 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 and at the same time, 
it's, it's on me to take a risk so I can start to feel more confident, more grounded, and become the kind of conscious leader that I wish that we had more of. I mean, I agree with you. I think that um, the fact that we monetize something to such a high degree that should be available and accessible to anyone is a little bit um, ridiculous. <laughs> that um, we should be able to have this access to knowledge because we do go through major things. And so I don't mean like on a daily basis. I mean, like if you have that thing that's inside of you that you're unable to deal with by yourself, you've already been able to talk to your family, your friends, your loved ones, and you're not getting anywhere and you're kind of just stuck in this cycle. And then I'm, that's what I'm saying then. Maybe something's too big for you to hold on to and you need to find someone else who can help you unravel it to make it easier for you to live with. Yeah. I'll offer to just the idea that remember it, it may be different at one time in your life than another. And at one point, you know, having somebody who's a talk therapist is the ideal. Another moment, a tree is who you need. Mm -hmm. So it's just, it's just that idea of outside of ourself, you know, mm -hmm. did you have, yeah. Outside. Yeah. And if I could add something too, like, this is really helpful too. hearing this is I think for myself too, what I've realized just from going to a lot of therapy and talking to friends and just kind of being in a program of answering whether it's work or whatever the issue is that I don't like. I think what's been really healing and helpful for me is to recognize what is it that I'm seeking when I'm sharing what I'm sharing. Right. So a therapist could give that to me or not you know, or a friend could give that to me or not. But if I can inside myself say, what is it that I'm seeking? Because there may be a lesson, but first and foremost, I may want to, as a human, be heard and have validation that this happened to me, right? And have a moment for that. And sometimes when I'm receiving that, I'm good, mm -hmm. right? And so sometimes there's a lesson, but if I'm not validated or I'm not heard, and then I'm going to therapy and all of these things because I'm wanting someone to recognize the experience. And so especially like, let's say it's around race or something like that. If that keeps not coming back to me, I find myself then looping in the same thing, not recognizing I'm needing to be seen and validated, right? To say, I'm sorry that that's the experience you had as opposed to, well, maybe that isn't what was meant. Yeah. Or maybe you should do this. Or maybe you should, do, right? So I think what I'm finding helpful for myself is to, recognize what is it that I am seeking for my own healing and it stops me from doing the repeat in many, many areas. And most times I haven't known what I was needing. So I was just on autopilot sharing. This happened and needing to tell a thousand people until someone said, I'm really sorry that happened to you. So it's helping me now to not continue to do that by saying, what is it that you need or that you're needing before you share this thing? Beautiful. I think that's what you said. Sometimes you don't even know that's what you need. And that to me is often where we get ourselves in a more complicated scenario that might create those stories and those loops and autopilot interactions because we haven't really um, done an, maybe enough self uh, care to, to, to recognize what is that? Like we're not giving ourselves time and space to just let the body settle, let the body feel, where are you feeling this? And let the inner intelligence come up. That's, I always like to remember in meditation, in Shavasana, in a practice that has stillness, we already have our soul, our, our highest self is kind of hanging out in there going like, all right, I'm here, but the access point you have to find. I, I can't manifest myself in any other way except in this subtle realm of calm because you won't hear me in any other way. There are too many other shiny things in the world that are, you're going to think are much more of a resource. There's too many problems in the world even for, for you to get drawn to, for, for you to actually think that that inner resource has value. So I'm going to wait. So you pause 
And you start to feel something bubble up in you that says, oh, you're there. That which I'm seeking is the inner wisdom of the self. And when that starts to come forward, what I believe is that we all have some important role. We have our own individual mission, our own individual path. And that that becomes more and more revealed to us as we calm and come into that space. But what we can get distracted by is all of the world's problems that we are not gonna be able to solve and the trick thinking that we are going to. Um, it's a complicated space. I think that we can have impact, but we have to first know what is like kind of what is our call? What is our our life's purpose, mm -hmm. our life's mission? And unraveling that, getting some clarity on that may take our whole life. But along the way, at least we're leaning in towards truly getting to know ourselves, truly getting to, you know, be an agent of peace in our community rather than what could be just, you know, a force of, of anger and resentment and unresolved trauma. Okay, I'll lay that out there. Who wants to take that up? <laughs> well, it brings to mind a, a question I want to ask each of you about your morning practice, how you set an intention to become more self-led, or if that's part of your morning practice. Um, or part of your meditation style. And when I say self-led, I'm, I'm referring to what internal family systems uh, and other across the board spiritualities refer to as the part that's always curious, compassionate, courageous, clear, calm, connected. Um, that That's our deepest kind of core self. And, the rest of it, other teachers describe as ego misidentification, all the thoughts and feelings that, that interfere with, with being self-led from that core. So is there, do you guys have a, a way in your meditation or morning practice or uh, grounding centering practice that, that you um, build that, build the strength of that core self? Um, do you know it when you feel it? You want to start with what you do? <laughs> um, well, I'm 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 fairly fresh into the. I mean, I've been doing IFS for years. And you but used I, to explain when you use letters, so like we all internal know. family systems. I've been studying internal family systems, where where it's it's a psycho spiritual map of inner parts, and each of us have developed over the years um, protector parts and manager parts and exiled inner children and parts that put out the the fire and pain of the shame of and and grief that we could never really fully hold and those are called firefighters. Um, so we each, uh, because the mind records everything that's ever happened, we we develop <clears throat> um, strategies to uh, survive. <clears throat> so <clears throat> that's 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 IFS internal family systems in a nutshell and. Um, I am in the process in my self-improvement strategy of, of building a morning practice where I go out and say prayers, prayers for my ancestors, prayers to great spirit, prayers to the sun. Um, I have a routine where I, I, I stand with my feet on the bare soil and I, and I say thank you ancestors and I name all my friends who passed away and teachers who passed away is that I can think of. It does not be perfect. And then I, um, I have some some yoga I'll do, and then um, uh, I, I I journal and um, and I I do the gratitude practice. So I like just first thing off the top of my head today I'm grateful for, and then I'll do like six or eight things I'm grateful. Um, that the air is clear and grateful to have fresh water to drink anything so that's one way that i get self-led um and 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 my growing edge is how to slow down pause and say this is enough like really take a minute to take a breath this is enough i don't have to keep on 
you know, pushing, pushing too much. I don't have to get it all right. It doesn't have to be all or nothing. Um, I don't have to be perfect. I'm not, you know, uh, I, I, I am enough. I always have been enough and I want to help other people feel the same way. Anybody else want to share with their morning or any time of day practice to help you feel connection? To something greater than the material realm, maybe. <laughs> yeah. One of the things I do um, that I feel is helpful, like I, so in the morning, like, I don't know that I would say this feels as helpful. It's just something for my own structure. So I'll do my Duolingo and then I'll, you know, do a little bit of journaling, just sort of the three things I'm grateful for. But one of the things I would say has been extremely, just immensely helpful for me in terms of dealing with like depression or anxiety or any of those kinds of things. One of the things for me that's helped me loosen that a lot more is recognizing like first slowing down a bit and breathing more throughout the day, but literally recognizing what I'm worried about. And there could be a ton of things. But what's been so helpful is to think and fantasize for a moment when I think like, let's say if I say, I want to ask someone out or I'm scared that they would reject me or I want to go to the store, but what if, what if I don't have enough money? I then flip it to say, what if you had more than enough money? What would that then play out as? If you ask this person out or you ask for the promotion and then your boss was like, of course you can have the promotion. What would that feel like and play that out? And it's been so helpful because I have tons of thoughts that I feel I worry about throughout the day. And it just helps so much to also, as I'm making that up, because most of those things don't happen, mm -hmm. why not make some room to then make up the fantasy version of what would be happen if the thing I fear the most didn't happen and the thing I wanted the most happened. Right. So just to use my brain and fantasy and energy to spend time doing that as opposed, because the worry stuff is going to come, the negative thoughts are going to come but that's helped me so much just loosen that a bit to say, oh, this is a lot of things I worry about. But to flip it helps me just feel like, oh, oh, it is nice to like fantasize about what it could be like actually being happy <laughs> as opposed to being unhappy. Yeah. <laughs> it sounds so simple, but at the same time, um, it, to, to actually put something like that in practice, I think it does take some kind of effort. And I think you know, Lars, you're touching on something really important here, which is what are what can we do on a daily basis? What kinds of awareness can we develop? Otherwise, we will default back to all the same systems, right? Because they're so deeply built. Um, so is there something we can do that, you know, switches the vibration, shifts the channel of what you typically okay. stay on? Go ahead. Well, for me specifically, it's um, it's changed throughout my life. It depends on the problem, and so like I think I said I said that before. It's the awareness. It's the awareness of what is the issue. Where does it hurt? And for me, for a long time, it was here. Like I I didn't feel as though what I had to say was important, much less that anybody would listen to me that I would say things and no one would hear the things that I was saying. So even though that's the way that I felt, it manifests in other ways. So just kind of having that awareness that the thing that I needed to be was heard, it, um, it helped me to try to walk in that path. So instead of just keeping my own thoughts to myself, instead I just started to share them and being very loud. But in doing all of that, it's like I had to have this foundation of understanding of who I was. And in the beginning stages of my life, it was like, for me to try to get to that point where I could hear myself, I'd have to go sprint back and forth for like an hour, run for like 30 minutes until I was physically drained and I can only hear myself mm -hmm. instead of everybody else that was saying something or anyone else that was doing something to me, you know? I had to like remove the rest of the world just so I can hear me. And then I had to get to that point where I understood who I was enough so that whenever I'm talking 
And whenever I'm interacting with the world, I am my own representative. There's no other version of me that exists. I walk into every room and I'm carrying myself on my own back. I don't say, oh, this is such and such. I'm, I'm showing up as myself. And there's so much more power in that when you have this knowledge of yourself. But you don't just arrive there. It's a lot of crying. It's a lot of tears. It's a lot of waking up in the morning. And um, what I used to do was um, I just sit. I couldn't move. I didn't want to. I just wanted to just sit there and I just wanted to sit because moving was too much. And that took a while to get through. But I got through it. You know what I mean? It's it's just kind of like it's difficult to explain to say that it just depends on what part of your life that you're in what will work for you then. But if you don't understand what you're trying to get toward, then you're gonna keep going in those cycles. You know what I mean? Like if you're just gonna be like, I'm gonna do this and I'm gonna do that. Well, you're just running away from the issue. Find the source of the problem. Find out where it hurts. Mm -hmm. It's something that you can like fix. But if you're just working on every other system that has nothing to do with the initial problem, then as much self-care as you can do in the world, you're not helping anybody, meaning yourself. <laughs> you're just kind of running around in circles. So it really is that stillness that Makunda was saying. It's being quiet. It's listening to yourself and understanding and knowing yourself intuitively. So most of my practices, they don't come from other people. Instead, they've been justified by other people. You know, like that, um, that gratitude thing where um, I was just sitting there and I'm like, okay, I got to focus on things that are good. What's good? And then someone else is like, oh, yeah, well, um, that's a therapy practice. Oh, well, I wish someone had told me that. <laughs> Maybe I wouldn't have wasted so much time. Or um, my body energetically feels like crap. I'm not going to eat that food. I'm going to go eat something else so that I wake up every day and I'm not feeling this sort of burden on myself. And for me, that's bread. I love bread. But it it, it does not do well with me in my life. Um, so it's like, it's silly to say that it's an easy process. It's, it's hard to say that there is an end. I always say it's just a journey, like um, an unfolding and unraveling of yourself. Like, why do I go and talk to trees? Because they listen to me. Like, y'all don't have to hear me. These are just words that I'm using. But those trees, they understand me in a way that no one on this earth could. That sounds really crazy. Now I'm going to stop talking. <laughs> <laughs> You're in the right circle of, of people, uh, Natasha. We, I think we all can relate in our own way. Uh, we are coming into our hour. And so I appreciate, we kind of feel like we each got something to say at the end there. And um Lars, maybe you got some of your questions question answered with that. I'll lastly just share for me, you know, like this morning, um, meditation, doing something that is consistent and steady for me has been vital for my practice versus, you know, doing it when I feel like it type of a thing. For me, the discipline of just taking, and now it's sometimes it's been five minutes, sometimes it's been an hour, mm -hmm. but I know that it's just something that I want to find consistency with for, for my practice. In my life, it's varied. One time in my life, I had two hours in the morning to practice asana and meditation and pranayama. That doesn't happen anymore. Mm -hmm. And I'm okay with that. Um, it does sometimes happen in the evening. Um, and I used to never practice in the evening until recent years. Um, so it was like, oh, that was more possible. Mm -hmm. The other main thing for me that I always do in the morning is to tidy and organize and clean my space. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that action kind of ties in with what we're talking about with our theme. My body act in action mode, cleaning and putting things, making my bed every day, which I think is an important practice. It's like a little mini ritual, um, putting books back, putting the dishes away, wiping the counters off, closing doors, um, putting the dishes back, like all of that before I leave the house. Like that is like one of my main practices now to think about order, think about, you know, it's, it creates a sense of calm for me. And um, there are certainly days when that doesn't happen and I feel a little jostled with that perfectionism. Like, oh, I, oh, I didn't, do. but I'm like, you know what? That's okay today. So this is a journey and like ending with what Natasha talking about, and I like referring this as well often is this unfolding. 
and it's a unique unfolding for each and every one of us. But we are here to help support each other and to remind each other, you're awesome. You're great where you are with what you're working on and what you're learning. Mm -hmm. Yes. And that's who I hope we can surround ourselves with is that kind of a community, that positive vibration of people rather than the negative vibration of people who will go into our program with us. Um, people who are like, hey, didn't you ask me that yesterday? <laughs> or somebody who can compassionately do that little bit of shaking it up, you know, getting involved in spaces where you feel those connections can grow in a way that remind you, getting in your body, you know, doing stuff that reminds you, oh yeah, I'm a physical being, doing things that remind you, I'm like this connected to a resource that that is infinite. I just think those are the things that that we forget, you know, are so powerful. So thank you all. Let's take a moment to close with that brief moment of silence to see what maybe comes to you after all that we've been talking about that you may imagine coming into action. Kind of like Marquez was talking about, actually fantasize about where this could go. Imagine the, the beautiful, positive unfolding that could happen simply from this state of awareness as Natasha mentioned. may the entire universe that dwells within this self and beyond may it be filled with everlasting peace and joy love and light and may the light of truth overcome all ignorance the light in me sees the light in you namaste Thank you.